Hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and welcome to our March 2024 CTSS quiz. I've put together, I think, a really good set of cases. Hopefully, it will make you think. Hopefully, you'll get the right answer, and hopefully, you'll learn something. So without further ado, let's get started. The most likely diagnosis in this case is... Well, the first thing you see is beating in the right renal artery. That alone would allow me to diagnose fibromuscular dysplasia. You also see beating in the right external iliac artery. So what are we dealing with? It's not the look of atherosclerotic disease. In a sense, it is a vasculitis. It's not Takayashu's aortitis, which is big vessel disease. This is a classic appearance for fibromuscular dysplasia or FMD. A very nice case. Interestingly, I do see lots of uh, changes in the iliac vessels, the external iliac vessel, to be specific with FMD. I also see it commonly in the SMA. Classically, we always think about the carotids and the renal arteries, but it's far beyond just that. In this patient who is febrile, the best diagnosis is, well, let's look at the images. There's decreased attenuation of the left kidney compared to the right. The cortical medullary interface is poorly seen. There's some stranding around the kidney noted. All of these changes put together really give you the diagnosis of acute pyelonephritis. You can see some of these changes in chronic pyelonephritis, but this is really when you have them all together and the kidney looks like this, it's acute pylo. It's not the appearance of renal infarcts, nor is it the appearance of chronic renal ischemia. Best diagnosis is acute pyelonephritis. In this patient three days post bowel resection, the best diagnosis is, well, I don't see a small bowel obstruction. It's not going to be a normal post-op study, obviously, because I'm showing it to you. I don't see a bleed present, but I see what looks like some foreign matter or some contrast or some high-density material in the left lower quadrant. When you look at it, particularly on the MIP coronal or the MIP topogram, you can see what looks like some drains in place, but in the left lower quadrant, there's some high density material. This is the marker, and this is a retained sponge. Again, retained sponges do occur, although we think they no longer should happen, but it is still a complication, and the radiologist needs to recognize it. The sponge had to be removed, so the patient had a second surgery. These two scans are nearly 10 years apart in a patient treated with radiation therapy for thymoma. What's the best diagnosis? Well, the image on your left, you see an anterior metastinal mass. That's a thymoma. On the image on the right, the thymoma is gone, but there's a large mass anterior to and involving the sternum. This indeed is secondary to radiation therapy, which was how the patient was treated. So in some sense, A, radiation-induced therapy changes is correct, but not the best answer. It doesn't look like recurrent thymoma. The anterior metastinum looks pretty good. And lymphoma, why would I think about lymphoma? I don't see a mass. What I do see is very dense matrix involving the sternum and the soft tissue anterior to the sternum. One of the complications of radiation therapy, fortunately uncommon, is developing a sarcoma. You can get chondrosarcomas or osteosarcomas, and this was an osteosarcoma post-radiation for thymoma. And a decade later is indeed very common. The best diagnosis in this case, there's a mass pushing on the trachea it comes upward toward the thyroid, but does not necessarily connect on these images. But when you look at its appearance, it doesn't really look like a teratoma. It's not really the look of lymphoma or thymoma. This is a very nice example of a substernal thyroid gland. Sometimes you can see it in direct continuity with the thyroid, but sometimes, like in this case, it really isn't. The most likely diagnosis in this case well, what I see is a very vascular mass in the region of the head of the pancreas, nicely seen as well on the cinematic rendering. Is this a hepatic hemangioma? You know, when you look at it, large pancreatic masses, again, I'm only giving you limited images, can sometimes simulate hepatic masses, but this really isn't the appearance of a hemangioma. 
If this was a liver mass, I'd be thinking about hepatoma or angiosarcoma. Melanoma mets can be vascular, but typically not this vascular. They can metastasize to the pancreas, but not this vascular. This is really ahead of the pancreas mass, and this is a very vascular with central necrosis of a neuroendocrine tumor. The most likely diagnosis in this case is, well, what do you see? Is a cirrhotic liver with splenomegaly portal hypertension. You see nodes in the porta hepatis. You see what looks like an infiltrating tumor in the pancreas with neovascularity and encasement centrally. Yes, the patient has cirrhosis. No, this is not lymphoma. This is not metastatic disease either. This is a hepatoma arising in a cirrhotic liver with neovascularity and vascular encasement. A very nice example. Sometimes hepatomas on CT don't have a lot of mass effect, but they are infiltrating. The most likely diagnosis in this case is, well, we see a large left periodic mass that's very vascular. The mass is separate from the pancreas. It's separate from the adrenal gland. It's separate from the kidney. It's too vascular for lymphoma. Castleman's disease can occur in the periodic region, can occur in the mesentery, and is usually vascular, but often multiple masses, but you can't see single masses. So that's a consideration. Melanoma can give you nodes, obviously, can be somewhat vascular. This may be a bit too vascular, and it's unlikely to have one node. Paragangliomas are classically extra adrenal pheochromocytomas. They're very vascular, commonly in the periodic region. They can occur in the organ of Zucker candle, they can occur in the neck and the mediastinum, particularly middle mediastinum. But in the periodic region, they occur just beneath the level of the adrenal gland most commonly. And although I would consider Castleman's and differential, this was a paraganglioma. In this 20-year-old female with pelvic pain, what's the most likely diagnosis? Well, the uterus has a low-density zone centrally with a rim enhancement. You can see this nicely on the axial and coronal. There's minimal free fluid present. This is not cervical stenosis. It would be more dilated, and you wouldn't expect that rim enhancement. It's not endometriosis, which usually is masses in the pelvis, which can simulate ovarian masses. It's not PID. You don't see any inflammation. This is a classic appearance. This is an intrauterine pregnancy. I don't see fetal parts, but on ultrasound, this was an eight-week intrauterine pregnancy. Just a very nice example. We don't see this very commonly, but something to think about. In this patient with abdominal pain and fever, the best diagnosis is, well, the liver looks irregular in texture. There are peripancreatic and periodic nodes, and then several masses in the spleen. Now, melanoma can cause this. I guess that's a possibility. Melanoma goes to spleen. It gives you nodes. Splenic abscess is a consideration, but we're talking about at least two lesions, and it likely would not explain the adenopathy. Often it's more cystic with splenic abscesses. So this is more solid. I'm thinking more tumor. Metastatic lung cancer is a theoretical possibility, but unlikely. The best diagnosis in this case is a B-cell lymphoma. B-cell lymphomas can only involve the spleen, can have single or multiple lesions, and also have adenopathy. So lymphoma is the right answer. And with that, that's 10 cases. Hopefully the cases made you think. Hopefully you got the right answer. And for us, most hopefully, it was very helpful. And with that, have a great day. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to the CTSS YouTube channel. You can also visit us at ctss.com for even more videos, plus quizzes, pearls, protocols, and oh so much more. We're also in the App Store and have well over a dozen apps for iPhone and iPad, all completely free. Thanks for watching.